So in this problem, they give us the value for mass one and they want us to figure out what the value for mass two is. And then they also give us some assumptions. They say, assume the rants, we can ignore the friction and we can ignore the mass of the ropes. So our strategy for this question, we wanna know the mass number two there, but if we try to draw a free body diagram of mass number two, we're gonna run into some issues because we don't know the force of gravity on mass two and we don't know what the tension in that rope is yet. So we're gonna to have to start with mass one on this one. And then the other thing to keep in mind is that once we figure out what the tension is in this rope, then we know that the tension in that rope has to be constant. So we'll start with mass one, use the information that they gave us about the 40 kilograms, use that to figure out our tension. And then once we have that tension, then we can do a free body diagram for mass number two. So if we draw our free body diagram for mass number one, we've got our tension, which is going upwards 60 degrees from the horizontal. And then we've got that normal force, which is gonna be perpendicular to that surface, 30 degrees up. And then we got the force of gravity going downwards. And now one thing we can do as well to make this a lot easier for ourselves is we can rotate our coordinate system. So you can see it, I've rotated the X and Y axis 60 degrees because what we have here is we have two forces which are perpendicular to each other and we don't really care about this normal force so if we rotate our coordinate system 60 degrees upwards what's going to happen is if we do our sum of forces in the x direction we're going to get the force of tension going in the positive x direction and then we're going to have some component of the force of gravity going in the negative x direction so what that's going to look like when we do our sum of forces in the x direction is it's going to be tension minus fg1 cos 30 to get that component going in the negative x direction so what we've done is we have sort of sidestepped the normal force there so that we just don't have to deal with it we could still solve this problem if we left our coordinates in the conventional way y going upwards and x going to the right the issue that we would run into there is that our equations would just be a lot more awkward to put together, but we should still end up with the same answer. So if we start with our sum of forces in the x direction, we'll have T minus FG1 cos 30 equal to zero. We wanna solve for that tension, so we can bring this term over the right-hand side of our equation. Once we've done that, we can replace our force of gravity with M times G. We know the value for the mass, and our value for G, 9.81. So we can plug those numbers in there and get a value for our tension. Once we got that, we can move on to mass number two. So when we draw the free body diagram for mass number two, now we've got the tension going up the ramp, up that 30 degrees, and then the normal force is perpendicular to that at 60 degrees. So what we can do, same sort of idea, we can rotate our coordinate systems to make things a little easier. Now what we're gonna be looking at is sum of forces in the y direction because we have the tension which points in the positive y direction and some component of the gravity force which points in the negative y direction. So what we'll do when we write out those equations is we'll have tension minus Fg2 sine 30. And now that we know what the tension is, we have that value. Now we can look at Fg2 and use that to figure out what the mass is. And that's what they originally asked for. So if we write our sum of forces in the y direction, we'll get tension minus Fg2 sine 30 is equal to zero. You can do the same thing, bring the force of gravity term over the right-hand side, replace that with M times G. And now we know the tension and we wanna find the mass. So we can bring G sine 30 over to the other side. So what we'll end up with is M2 is equal to tension divided by G sine 30. Now we can plug in that value for the tension that we found and get our mass as 69.3 kilograms. So the thing to keep in mind with this question here, it's important that you start in the right place. If you had just looked at this question and uh, hadn't really thought about it and you said, oh, okay, I wanna know the mass over here. So I'm gonna draw a free body diagram for mass number two. It's not gonna get you very far because you've got uh, one set of equations with two unknowns. You don't know the tension and you don't know the mass. So I encourage you when you look at these translational equilibrium type problems is before you start drawing free body diagrams is just 
think about what's going to happen when you do that and think about what your equations are going to look like and how many unknowns you're going to have. So with this one, because they gave us more information about mass number one, usually it makes it a little easier to start with the place where you have the most information and then work your way towards the place where you have the least information. So that's it for this one. Let me know if you have any questions below and I'll answer those as soon as I can.